Yeah. Oh, something is happening. Oh, here. oh, are we live yeah. now? Hello. Yes, we are live now. Oh, hello, I think everyone. We are live. Yes. Are we live? Oh, yeah, oh, we oh, are oh live. okay. So, um, are you all ready? Ready, ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Oh. Welcome to a special live stream about Grace. Um, I don't know who Grace is, but let's talk about who we are first. Um, <laughs> so I'm Madalena. I'm a lead here at the product and design team at Nabucasa and Home Assistant. Um, mainly, uh, my work is like the janitor of the uh, product and user experience and all that. You can find me on Discord and the forums. <laughs> Who's next? I'm um, um, I'm next, I guess. I'm uh, 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 there, and then we'll go this way, right? So, okay. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. My name <laughs> is uh, Matthias, as you pronounce it in Dutch. I'm a user experience designer for Nabucast, uh, one of the first full-time uh, employed uh, designer for Nabucasa and uh, I mainly work on Home Assistant and uh, work with uh, Madeline and Paul on some awesome stuff. More on that later. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, I'm Paul. Uh, I work on, as Nabucasa developer. Uh, I'm front end developer and I mainly work on the front end of Home Assistant. So, designer mm -hmm. front end, maybe we, we will see some UI stuff. Yeah, we have a very special group here. Paula's not here today. Frank's not here today. Well, just three of us in the house. So I guess we can. Uh, it's a very special day. Today is uh, February 29th. So it's a late year day. It's not going to happen for another four years. So I'm glad that we did it today um, because nobody's going to do it for another four years. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's like we're the kids yeah. in uh, in the house and our parents are outside. Like I know the parents Frank are outside and, 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 and now we can have a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's see. I I think uh, Paulus is uh, in, in the chat right now. So, uh, let's see. Um oh actually yeah, so let's take a look at what we're gonna talk about today. Ta da let's go. <laughs> so what about Grace? Um, that's, well, first of all, I think, yeah, let's talk about Grace, the person, right? That's, that's, uh, very important because we're naming this project, uh, co-name after her. So, uh, Dr. Grace Hopper, uh, American, uh, mathematician, uh, admiral in the U.S. Navy, a pioneer in computer engineering. Uh, she is the one who, like, figure out, like, how to make the first a computer compiler. You can check out her lectures on YouTube. Well, she's not live on YouTube these days, but there's a lot of great lectures that she has given over the years. You can learn a lot about what she does. And she's always a very fun, humor, humorous like lecturer to listen to. Um, one thing that uh, she did was that uh, back then, back in the days when computer programming goes, like you have to use punch cards to like indicate zeros and ones so that you can send a command to the computer. And the problem of that is that the people who want to write the instructions for the computers, they, they write in a bunch of like English sentences. So in order to bridge the gap between people who write sentences in English and computers who can read only punch cards, zeros and ones, she invented a bridge that is in between that is so that is some sort of code that is both human readable and computer readable. And then the one of the first like compiler was born. And eventually that program language, uh, it was like Flowmatic, I think. And then it eventually uh, evolved into COBOL, which is still used today uh, in most of your banking system. I think every time if you do a bank transition, uh, COBOL was used. And yeah, so she's super awesome and uh, we like to commemorate uh influential f uh, women in tech for like some of our special projects so this time we picked grace so um very excited about this so when was the last time we actually picked uh, another influential like uh female scientist mm -hmm. do you remember so <clears throat> something with the l 
stuck with an L. What, what was it? Oh, a Ada Lovelace. Yes, that's right. So Lovelace, um, yeah, that was like totally before my time, before our time, right? Uh, it was, um, it was the code name for the foundation of our dashboard engine that was launched back then in January 2019. So now we want to build the next iteration that is on top of Lovely. So we're not replacing it, but we're like doing something that is on top of it. And it's going to be called Grace. So that's the internal code name. We're not going to call Grace from now on. Um, but for the first stream, we yeah. want to like be a little surprise because it's been a while since we done something with the UI completely like overhauled. So this is going to be awesome. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so welcome to Grace, uh, Project Grace. So what is Project Grace? So uh, what we found out is that Home Assistant is we want Home Assistant to be the best smart home platform for your privacy, for choice, for sustainability that is built on top of our community, a helpful community and our users. And so out of these five tenets, right, smart home choice, uh, <coughs> privacy, sustainability, and community, uh, we're focusing on the smart home today. And what is a smart home, right? Smart home is something that lets you uh, automate, of course, um, once lets you to observe, uh, lets you to control, and it might even be able to anticipate uh, any of the devices that is in your house. So dashboards cover the control and uh, observing the monitoring of your smart home. And so are other things like such as voice command, which we have done in the past year for you have the voice. And also maybe there are other devices in future, right? Like uh, ambient computing devices, like ESP home devices and so on. And the two main goals that we want to try to achieve here from what we've seen that uh, users have been running into having problems with, uh, we realize that we definitely need to make the customization and organization of our dashboards like easier and more intuitive. And we also need to make our dashboards like out of the box to be like useful for everybody and be relevant right away. So that's the goal of this project. And so what it is and what it is not is that it is going to be the new default user experience and we're going to build on top of Lovelace. Lovelace is a great, very extensible system. We're not throwing away anything here. Uh, it's not going to be rebuilt from scratch. Uh, one thing that is very important is uh, the home approval factor, or whatever you would call it, is to make sure that right, uh, Home Assistant is not only usable right, on the dashboard for just you, all of us here who are listening, who are like the sysadmin essentially in our household, but also the, the user of the users, which means the people who are living with us that uh, have to use Home Assistant because of our brilliant uh, Mac. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, yeah, so like that can be our, our our roommates, our spouse, our kids, our parents, and so on, right? So we need to make sure that that user interface need to work with them. So that's the default user experience for them as well, and not just for us. And that's home approval factor. And that also means that like, unlike any other apps around the world, like, like you know, Apple Home, Google Home, smart things, and so on, like this is not just a phone app, right? Because we have to make it work for not just uh, people who use it on the phone to control the stuff, but also people who want to have a 42 inch monitor that is showing home assistant like on in the kitchen. We want people who like want to use the Google Pixel tablet dedicated to home assistant. And so we need to work in every single user interface and screen sizes. And that creates a very particular challenge that is like something that other smart home systems do not need to deal with. And last of all, right, uh, to reiterate, uh, dashboard is about monitoring and controlling the smart home and not just the control controller, where a lot of other apps tend to make the smart home app like a remote control. We are more than that, right? We have all this data for history data. We should have some way to help you, uh, inform you, give you information as well about that. So, uh, believe it or not, this is not a new thing. So yeah, so some some of us are hired uh, over the past year. Thank you to Nabucasa, by the way. Um, actually, a shout out to Nabucasa, right? In case uh, you don't know, Nabucasa are the, the, the people who are like the maintainers behind Home Assistant. And um, if, by and subscribing to, the... to Home Assistant as well, yeah. uh, 
uh, by subscribing to Home Assistant Cloud, you are supporting Nabucasa, and Nabucasa supports Home Assistant, and Home Assistant supports you and your family. So definitely, uh, please subscribe, uh, like, and subscribe. Yeah, shout out to all the people that subscribe to Nabucasa that make this yeah, possible. Thank you so much. Yeah, that you yeah. make this project possible. Like I wouldn't be able to be here and talking to you about this because I, I'm very grateful that I'm able to work here on this project. So uh, we started this last spring, like in March, April. And the first thing is like, yeah, we determine the goals of the project, like what we talked to you about just now. And the first thing we do is that we, we want to make sure that it's not just like what we like, right? I mean, have you seen like some of the dashboards that we personally made? Like I, I go crazy with my home assistant, but uh, I'm not making for everybody, right? We're making it for the, the hundreds of thousands of users who are using home assistant. So we want to make sure that we have some real data points that we can rely on when we make the design decisions. So the first thing that we did is uh, research and discovery. Uh, we did user research with uh, interviews with uh, 2,000 people, and that includes like people who are like setting up the home assistant and also the people in their household as well. Um, and we also like look at like over 100 different people's dashboards uh, provided by you on Reddit or on our forums or. Uh, also, every, everything Smart Home Lewis sent us a bunch of screenshots of the best dashboards that you've seen as well. And that it has been very helpful for us to really determine what should really go on the dashboard. And yeah, so after that, you know, we all come back together, did some ideation. We came up with like six major things that we want to work on. Uh, we're going to prioritize them, work on the first three first for now. Uh, don't get too excited. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we've been designing it uh, over the winter. And now, finally, uh, there's some uh, fruits from the, the process, and we can't wait to show you. And that's why Paul is here, too. Very exciting. Ta -da. OK, so uh, without further ado, let's dive into it, shall we? Um, so where we are coming from, like, why are we doing this, Matthias? Yeah. Research, so it's all started with research, right? So you just uh, see the timeline, and um, to to know where we 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 what what our users want and who our users are, and what kind of problems they have, you have to start with research, right? So we've done a, a bunch of research in a couple of uh, in the past year, and uh, but before we start uh, deep diving on that, I want to take a a step back first and show you our past dashboard system here on top you see the very first iteration of our dashboard uh the so best one panel. the best one so minimalistic. <laughs> it's it's so minimalistic it's awesome it uh, it works so if i remember correctly um, when paulus bought some philips u lights he wanted to do more than philips u had out of the box so he started home system basically and he had to had to have a uh, interface for it, so he started with the, the screenshot on top. And uh, then he evolved that into something with Bootstrap, and then later on introduced Material Design. Uh, it was all focused on touchscreen devices, so mobile phones and tablets, so you can sit on your couch and turn on a light. Uh, it was specifically for no this, it was started off with that so it was very focused on a couple of entities auto generated and easy to use you there was no need for customizations because you, there were a couple of entities right oh i remember the first one oh nice one of the veterans of home assistant here in the, in the stream nice um so this was a real nice dashboard for a couple of things a couple of things you could, could interact with. But then as the project grew larger, this wasn't good enough anymore. So we introduced in this uh, stage panel, if I remember correctly, we introduced like YAML grouping, not the grouping as we know as the grouper helpers as we, as we have today. But it's, it's, a, it's a system to group entities in a way on your dashboard. So we 
in that at, uh, at that time we noticed people want to customize the dashboards more right do more with the dashboards than out of the box as possible so in 2019 we released released lovelace and lovelace had the ability to do more Ta-da. and that's what we have today <laughs> so lovelace uh, introduced the bigger change at the front end and the back end was not it was different so we could do more in the front end also and it didn't have like the magic of algorithms that you had a out of the box dashboard that was hard to adjust to your own likings and it did with introducing a uh, ui editor uh, new cards and also the possibility to add custom cards for developers to yeah. create custom cards for your own create custom cards so, and it was uh, awesome so yeah so basically we went awesome 180 software. right <laughs> like we yeah, went from yeah. like we want to auto generate the entire dashboard for you in the beginning and because a lot of people want to customize it so we were like well we're going to give you free total full total control so now yeah. it's like you either do the auto generate the dashboard or you start from scratch like you're on your own yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> it it looks yeah, so you can see like the changes have been like the past like few years of evolution mm. like the firmware stat new already I love that thermostat and yeah, it's cool. And um, what I also f find interesting is that that um, in I, I'm not sure we don't have the analytics, but with the introduction introduction of Lovelace, I think the project also grew like immensely. Like people, yeah, it it, it was a creation of the too. Right. I mean, we haven't met, but we heard a lot about you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, it has changed uh, quite a bit. So the first cards, uh, for example, the, the horizontal slider, we changed that also with the, with the term set card. Um, but also new cards were introduced. Uh, when Paul joined, we introduced the tile card, right? Um, yeah, we did a lot in Lovelace, so we iterated all, also on Lovelace. But there are some pros and cons mm -hmm. in everything in life, but also for our dashboard system, Lovelace. So first off, it's it's very flexible, and uh, in a way that you can build your dashboard to your likings, like within the system that that lovelace provides or you can go all the way like like you madalena you built your own dashboard that doesn't even look like lovelace anymore but it's it's like yeah, totally different yeah. but it's based on lovelace i like to abandon it, the dashboard to my will basically yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and not everyone so, can do you, that so <laughs> No, not everyone can do that. So that's also already one of the cons, yeah. right? So it doesn't. It, it, well, first, first, continue on the pro. So it's it's flexible. You can do almost everything what you want with it. It has a lot of cards, uh, a lot of custom cards. It's some popular ones. Yeah, many, many. I don't know how many custom cards there is, but uh, like a uh, huge amount. Uh, new yeah, custom cards yeah. uh, appeared every week, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, you're one of the creators, right? Paul, yeah, the a small, a small card. <laughs> a small card. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, also, it's yeah. cool. So, so before before the states uh, uh, dashboard, before we introduced Lovelace. So the new one is it's easier to even to uh, maybe the same, but it's it's it handles a huge amount of entities compared to different kind of dashboards. Mm -hmm. And it's cool because it's responsive, so you can view it on different screen sizes, like the. 40 inch ultra wide screen to your iPhone 12 mini or smaller. I don't know. Uh, the hard part about Lovelace is that it doesn't scale. So once you press the magic button of take control, you have taken control of your dashboard and home yeah. assistant doesn't help you anymore. So you, if you got a new device, a new entity, and you want to put it on your dashboard, you have to do that manually. And, uh, like we mentioned before if you want to go all nuts you have to have some skills so you have to know yaml but maybe even you have to know css and you definitely have to install hacks 
because you can install custom cards and update it yeah. by yourself. But it's the hard way. Um, and the layouts are pretty basic. So there are a couple of different, what we are calling views, uh, and they are all based on the masonry and layout. We, have three of them. <laughs> we have got only three of them. Yeah, yes. I don't use one card, or you have a sidebar, and then you have masonry. That's it. Yeah. That's all you have. <laughs> Or you can hack it and you introduce like the horizontal uh, card or the vertical card. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it's uh, hard to fit all use cases. That's something we found out in the research too, right? So, like a hundred thousand of users, and we've seen a lot of different kind of dashboards. So that it's hard to fit every use case here, and it's uh, also looks a bit dated. Um, it's based on material design. So with uh, the first stage uh, dashboard, it was based on material design one, maybe even, I don't know. Then material wow. design two came out. And today we've got material design three and uh, we are slowly updating some components to that. Um, but the UI can, uh, can have some fun. I saw in the chat and uh, some people love to to spend hours and run up hours building their dashboard. So maybe we have to do nothing and keep it like yeah. this because they love it. <laughs> I still want to do it. I mean, when, when you see someone can make like the Star Trek, like L cars interface, you know that this thing is going to be on Starship someday. <laughs> it's like no other smart home app can do that, right? I mean, this is like the one that really like let you build that whole thing from scratch. So about masonry, I see some questions. We're gonna talk about more about what masonry is. It's a, it's a design and yeah, not specifically design, but more on that later. Yeah. So Lovelace has a few problems in its user experience. And today we're gonna try to tackle one of its biggest problems. Multiple one. Ooh. Yay. So first off, layout. So that's one we just pointed out, right? So the layout and we call Ooh. it masonry. Uh, but what is masonry? Here you can see um, an example. So masonry is is uh, um, the best example, right? Here you can see is, is Pinterest. It got multiple images and it fills up the screen. Uh, so it's great for mood boards. It 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 it, it gives you a nice uh, overview of different kind of in this kind of uh, photos or images and it's basically like laying out as, as bricks so if you've got a brick wall uh, it, it gets a similar pattern and that's if you have been using our dashboards um, then you know what it's like to use masonry so to give you an example you muted them Yeah, it's like a brick wall, no gaps, right? So that you have yeah. one wall. But uh, the in, bricks in the doesn't brick matter there. where they are. You can place a Correct. brick whenever you want. You want to have a steady wall with no gaps inside. So then you get the yeah. masonry. So how does it work? So um, it, it, it's organized from left to right. And every next card is in an order. So it's pretty Always. simple. Where's the so, next card? Where's the next card? What do you think? Um, uh, uh, below one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> On the right. Oh, something. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. No. Oh, no, it doesn't. That, that's, uh, uh, the demo oh. doesn't work in, on this tool. Oh, the demo uh, doesn't. Oh, well, we can do, I can do screen share right now. Just to, just to. Uh, yeah, let's try it. Give me one second. Well, this is a this is a grassroots production, guys. So you know, there was there's always uh, technical difficulties. So um, let me share my screen. Okay, I'm trying to do some uh, music. All right. Um, wait here so okay cool all right here we go so uh uh nice. where number one where's number two on the right there we were oh man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not below okay the, well, where, where's three 
are also <laughs> on the right. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. so you get the picture, right? So one, two, three, and number four is there. But where does number five show up here? That's the interesting uh, Below one? Mm. No. Below two? No. 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 <laughs> where? Below, number below four. three? Yeah. Why? So this is uh, what masonry is doing. So number four is the smallest <laughs> one. So the next card is below the smallest one. It tries to fill up the screen. So and if you uh, continue on this, uh, you can see how the number six is going to be below number two. Um, below, really? Oh, OK. Oh, man. Yeah. OK. So. And number seven in this Three. same. Uh, oh. oh, one. No, OK. No. Yeah. So Darn this it. is what happened. <laughs> And eight um, and nine, and then and then the rest. <laughs> wow! So uh, it's very unpredictable. Like I, I can't really tell where the next cards really go. Um, that's kind of a. Uh, I mean, it looks really neat, but um, that that means every screen, every, uh, the order is going to be all different. Is that what that is going to be? Oh. oh man! Yeah. So. Masonry has some cool stuff, but it's, it's a big drawback. So the first, uh, uh, oh, there it is. The, the, so one of the problems here, or the, the, the positive things, is that it saves space, right? So as you can see in the previous example, so it tries to fill up the, the screen as, as tight as possible. So it's easy to um, view images, for example, Pinterest. Um, but because it's it's doing kind of magic, it's it's hard to guess the order of the card. So if you reorder stuff, what were you trying to do in our dashboard? So if you want to move a card from the bottom right to the top left, it's pretty hard to do. We're gonna show you an uh. example later on. And to find a specific light, for example, on different screen sizes, you always have to search around again. Um, so on different screen sizes, it's hard to use. And if you scale down your screen, the whole masonry layout, like the order of the cards, swap around in an order that you don't know beforehand. And the extra drawback is that um, different height of cards, as we have currently, also makes it harder. So it's, it's hard to guess where things are moving around. That's the big drawback. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and it's even worse yeah. uh, when it's responsive <laughs> because the number of columns change and uh, so all the UI moves uh, when you when you resize your screen. Yeah. Mm. I'm seeing really excited people in the chat. By the way, yeah, I want to see well. stuff. I understand why. So let's continue. Um, so. In our uh, uh, research, what we did, so one of oh. the things is, is a bunch of, uh... ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that's, Jing. That's one of our findings. <laughs> that's Jing. So we, in a bunch of screenshots we gathered of different kinds of dashboards, what we noticed is that people try to fix this by creating just one column. So that means there is no masonry anymore. So it's just one vertical row of cards, and maybe it's grouped like uh, like two cards next to each other. And it makes it more predictable and it's it's more or less uh, chopping out the masonry out of her, out of law place. Well, and that gets to a second problem. Drag uh, and drop. Uh, uh, wait, what is that what it says? Oh wow, oh wow, Dan, drag and drop, okay. Oh yeah, so that's a, that's a term that you heard all the time. Uh, everyone talks about it. We tried uh, we tried quite many years try to work on this. It is a very tough problem to solve. So uh, one of the reasons we're going through this is that like not only we're trying to uh, you know talk about the design and the mechanics behind it, they also like want to show you like what the technical challenges really were, right, behind trying to implement this. So, um, so just to show you an example, right? So what, what this drag and drop really is for, right? It, it is for um, rearranging the cards, right? So when you start building a dashboard, you want to move the cards to the right place. So you have like a bunch of cards. So it's here, there are 12 cards. Uh, uh, let's see. So if I want to move like a card from one place to another, 
then oh. then you wouldn't quite know where it's gonna land. So I'm gonna show you a live example here. So okay. you have like all these cards, right? Usually a person has dashboard set how many cards? Like 12 cards is like so few cards, right? I easily have like 40 cards on my dashboard. Like how many cards do you have right here on your dashboard? To be honest, I'm now using the default dashboard. <laughs> so they're like, what? Well, that, that's a ton if you have like that's 200 devices. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I have 200 only cards. Yeah. I have and, only and one what happens is out of the box experience. It's my way. If, if I just want to move one card, right? I want to cut, move card number four to something lower, like mm, here, right? Uh, see what happens. So four right now is uh, the left of it is twelve. Below is thirteen. Okay. So if I resize the window, uh, oh shit! Oh, 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 sorry, man. I should have a beeper. I just keep. <laughs> I just said the S word. But anyway, four now is all the way to the right, and uh, left is twelve. Below is thirteen, and uh, now four is in the middle. Now number four is uh, not seen anywhere anymore. So it's like way far below and then go back to here number four is now on the most left column so good luck finding your card if you're going to design for more than one screen fun um so that's the problem so uh when you have drag and drop and rearrangement of cards together right the problem is that the two things are actually incompatible so what does that mean? Well, that means is that we're going to tell you here, here live on this stream, is that we are unable to do drag and drop with the masonry layout. So, um, sorry, guys. That's all for the stream for today. <laughs> okay, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> Well, so what that means is we can either pick one. You either have the drag and drop or you either have Matrix, but you cannot have both. So there has to be other ways, right? So what it turns out is that drag and drop is not only an engineering problem. I mean, I mean, people can do drag and drop since Windows 3.1. But even if you're in Windows 3.1, I don't know how old you are here. If you resize the window, you have to move all the icons all over again. So it's not easy to design something that can be in different sizes, yet also can be drag and drop. So it's not just an engineering problem, it's also a design problem. And so the solutions, like we, we have like previously done, we have like done the second drop, which is awesome. The demo was great, but it is really hard to like, really like do the stuff. Like we, we, we figure out how to do the dragging, right? But like when, once it become like, talk about the responsiveness of the screen, it's very difficult. So we come up with a solution. Uh, we call it. Like a lot of people have tried it before, right? So, so Zach is here in the yeah. chat. Yeah. He, Thank you, Zach. he made it possible. Second drop. So second we will still have and... some second second drop, I hope. Yeah. Um, so for this, this new grid system, we call it the sections view. And it has three main tenets. There's a cards and sections. There's a grid system. There's a Z grid automatic arrangement. But before diving into design any further, since it's already been half an hour, so let's get <laughs> right into it. <laughs> you uh, let's patient. do a demo. You have uh, are you ready, yeah. Paul? Um, yeah, I'm ready. Is, should we share I think the people screen? love demos, so maybe maybe it would be better to to see a demo. Yeah, let's do 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 the do the demo. Okay, I'm gonna add. Oh. Yeah. Do you see well, let's thing? make your screen smaller first, so we can see. Uh, let's zoom, zoom in a little. Uh, I will look if I can uh, zoom in. Yeah, I think it's okay. This worked, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So, we are. as you can see, yeah, um, this is a, the new layout, the section uh, layout. So, if you look at, at the screen, we we have different sections, different group of cards, and uh, it allows you to, to group uh, your card by domain or by... Uh, by room, by everything you want. Uh, you don't have to use a uh, nested grid or vertical or uh, other stack uh, like this. Mm. Uh, it will be easy. Uh, so it's actually like a, can... a group of cards or something, right? 
Yeah, and as you can see, uh, each grid has a, each segment has a fixed grid with a four column, uh, one, two, three, four. And then uh, when you resize your, resize your screen, oh, mm. it will not resize the the section. The, it will not change the order of the card inside the section, but only section. Uh, so on mobile, you have each section uh, one below each other and. Uh, Ah, yeah. so the cart is always with like it's say in the kitchen section you have the uh, fridge and like the worktop next to each other on top of each other if you resize the screen they will still be like right next to each other right yeah let's, let's see nice uh, so maybe we can show how you can create this dashboard with uh, this new layout yeah let's try so to make one from scratch yeah, I will create a view. Hmm. So the cool yeah. thing about responsiveness is that now you don't need to make a dashboard three times for just three different monitor sizes. You only need to do it once. If you add a device, you add a device like entity to your dashboard. You can add it to all your like 42 inch dashboard screen, your tablet and everyone's phones. So that's the cool thing about responsive design. Yeah, so here you have a, a new view type that is section. Uh, we create a new a new section, and here we have a, a new editor for this. So we we have a new a new section created. So I will uh, create a section. So I will uh, I will take shutters to put all my shutters in in, the, in this section, and then I can add a, a card like uh, in every every uh, dashboard. And I will add, uh, like, uh, my, sh my study shutter, for example. Click save. Mm. If you want to add another, you can. I see. So far, so good. It's just like, uh, yeah. oh, looks like add dialogue, yeah. but the dialogue is slightly different, right? Oh, and, now uh, we have the top. That's just tile card yeah. first. And there's one. Right. And so one thing, another, yeah. the new dashboard is going to be based mostly on tile card, but you can still use any of the existing cards. Yeah. So um, I will add a, a light section. And we we'll call it lights. And the cool thing with this is, is that if you change a card, edit a card, you don't have to go to a, a, a nested editor with a grid view or vertical stack, you can you you can just uh, you can just change the cards from the from the dashboard. Or what, what, uh, what I always did is go to the raw editor and edit stuff in YAML. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, and as, as you know, the card have uh, many features. Like uh, you can add button to to open your uh, your shutter or. Uh, even you can uh, have the cover position, uh, yeah, the thing you want. And if I click save, you can see that the grid auto um, auto adapt from the card size. For now, we only have a, a few amount of cards. There is uh, only tile card, uh, button card, and uh, sensor card that supports this. But uh, more cards will come in the future. So tile card uh, works, uh, button card works, and sensor card also works, right? Yeah, if I add the sensor card, it will work too. Nice. Yeah. So how can I add multiple cards at the same time? It's going to take a while to add. Yeah, for example, card. I, I, uh, there is a shutter here, but if you want to add uh, many shutter, you, you, you have a button here. I, I think many people don't know this button. Mm. But this is a forgotten if, button. Yeah. yeah. So I will, I will click shutter. I will show, it will show all my shutter in my, uh, in my home. I select all of them. I can Ooh, click continue. So you can type shutter and add all. Oh, wow. And it's yeah. all added as tile card now. Nice. Yeah. And if you are on the older view, you will. <laughs> Yeah, it's my red house. So I, I have many shutters, but <laughs> it's a devotion. <laughs> yeah. um, and then you click add, and 
You have oh, all, the, all the card here. Nice. Boo. Nice. Yeah. And as you can see, if I resize, it will right be away. automatically uh, responsive. Cool. This is really cool. And uh, maybe some Very people nice. uh, notice uh, some buttons, like uh, this button, for example. Like oh, yeah. uh, if I want Copy to... Copy and paste or something? No, this one, I can take this section and put it here to reorder section. Oh, so, what was that called again? Was the reordering of sections? Something with dragons. Yeah. Something dr dragging, um, dr dropping. Drop, 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 and drag. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> drop, yeah. drop. <laughs> and if you if you if you Sorry. want to to move a card, for example, you, you you want this card and you want it here, you you can do this. You can do <laughs> cut, and then here you can pass it. That's oh, paste the dashboard. And and you can pass a card between uh, between section two. Oh, can you paste it in another section? This one. Yeah, well, we can paste it here. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can paste it. Well. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ooh. But I but guess. I think people already know uh, that we can do that. Mm -hmm. What if, he, if I can take this card and put it here? <gasps> no way. <laughs> no way. This is cool, right? This is cool. So you can rearrange cards within the section, but also across yeah. sections. Nice. Yeah. You can also change the order of card here. Cool. This is cool, right? You can also duplicate them, delete them. You can also delete the whole section if you want. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna get them. And uh, also, if you if you want, for example, uh, add, you can go from uh, any other uh, page like. Uh, I would go to my heat pump. Uh, yeah. For example, I have uh, many sensors here, and I want uh, them in, in my dashboard. So I can, here we have a button at dashboard. It's already here, but uh, it yeah. worked too mm. with, uh, with section. Also one of those forgotten buttons, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. And, now it uh, works with um, yeah. tile cards. Now. So I select the, the new view I just created. <clears throat> I click Next. It will create a, a section for me, and I click Add Dashboard. And then, when I go to the to the dashboard, it's here, and uh, you can reorder them. Uh, nice. You well, can I name, you automatically name the section for you. you. Could call it Heat Pump. Yeah. Nice. And it supports also uh, other card. For example, if you want to add a, a weather card, you can uh, you can add a, a weather card. Nice, cool. So any yeah. existing card, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Right? Yeah. Can you show more examples of those? Maybe you're editing your other dashboard where has more cards there. Yeah, entity entity oh, card works yeah. too. Nice. Nice. Done. <laughs> oh, the history graph. Yeah, this graph's working it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's too. Cool. Yeah. And you can just click on it and just edit it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then it's done. And it's fully so responsive. Someone want to see uh, maybe it works. Does it? Can you make it one column mobile? Let's see. Nice. Yeah. Yep, it works just fine. And the, the title is optional. You can add a title if you want, but uh, you don't have to. Nice. I'm uh, seeing already um, some questions about custom cards. Yeah, for, we will talk about uh, the limitations for this. It's just the first iteration uh, of the of the new section. 
for now, custom card will take the, the full width uh, like, uh, like the weather card, the uh, graph card, but uh, mm -hmm. we will provide a way soon for a custom card developer to, to provide, uh, we will provide an IPA to, to custom card to, to provide the size they take on the, on the, on the grid. And uh, yeah. in the future, we so. will be able also to, to change the size of the card. Because for not tile card, it, it just uh, has the size of a grid uh, because it fits well, well on the mobile and on desktop. But uh, maybe you want it a full size or uh, something like that. So we plan this in the future. Yeah. Yeah, so like you can see that the, the graph and the tile cards are all al aligned tightly on the grid, but um, the other cards, if they haven't like added the feature yet, like the weather card, you can see that it's not aligned right now. But future uh, people can have an API and then be able to specify that in the custom card. So everything will be aligned very tightly, nicely. Yeah. Oh, so, dark mode. Some people ask for uh, dark mode, so it works it work on dark mode too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. But it, uh, as for before, right? What other so, questions we got here? Let's see. So I've seen JLo re requesting four buttons. Show the four buttons. <laughs> um, we, which is always three columns horizontal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 then. Oh, you, you want to do the JLo thing first? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, where is this question? Let's, let's bring it back up. This one. Maybe duplicate this oh, one. four buttons. Yes. So, yeah, button car also works. And you can see that it's like, uh, yeah, you can put four buttons right next to each other. So, it's like you can make a cool, fun remote control like that. Yeah. In, if, if you put the, the state and the it will take more place to, to display oh, nice. but, uh, if it's icon only it will be only one uh, once yeah cool so um hmm. <clears throat> uh let's see yeah, someone asked uh can we have wider sections? So uh, for this one, this is the first iteration. So right now, yeah. all the co uh, columns or sections are the same width. But yeah, the, we are definitely, well, well, we're releasing this as uh, experimental as a work in progress. So definitely give us feedback of like anything that you might want to do. And uh, we will look into that. For this first version, we're going to mm -hmm. provide the, the drag and drop functionality between sections, uh, within sections, and the card grid right now. And yeah, we're going to keep building on top of it and make it better. Yeah. I'm already seeing some bunch of great ideas. For example, uh, icons. Can I really got an icon next to the title? Or, uh, yeah, for, for now, you can, use, uh, em you can use the emoji for now, like uh, I did for this, for this oh, one. Nice. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll add support for icons, uh, maybe uh, some shortcut here, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We definitely want your feedback and see like how you use it. Yeah. So definitely post your screenshots and you know, and what you're trying to do yeah. and you know, things like that. There, there is many limitations because we, we wanted to to show an experimental version to, to have feedback. So, so play with it and uh, give your feedback. Yeah. Like this is the first step, so we don't want to make the scope too big, you know, because otherwise it's not going to be out to you for another few months. We want to get this out to you as soon as possible. Ooh. Um, so do we have our, that, that's all right for the for the yes. Yeah, it looks like that's awesome. Thank you so much, Paul, for the demo. Yay, Paul. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yay, bravo, bravo. Oh, why can we give feedback? We can, yeah, do we, you can come on like a home assistant forum. I think that's the easiest so that it won't get lost. Um, or either that, I mean, Reddit, I, I read the Reddit forum, so Reddit as well, so. Yeah, yeah. So basically the main channels uh, we're on, for example, our own forums were, 
we are on uh, Reddit. Um, yeah, so share as you like. Um, yeah, right now it's already in beta. So yeah, uh, since yesterday. Yeah. Since yesterday it's in beta. So if you want to play with it, join beta and yeah. uh, share your. Oh, uh, wait for there. one week and uh, you will have uh, always for one week. Yeah, in the next release. Yeah, but Ooh. more on it later. So let's get back to um, you know, <clears throat> Discord. It's like you can you can code there, but like you know, like the the message gets very very quickly right away. So I'm like, yeah, we're not it's better on the it. on the forum, yeah. Yeah. So um, yes, it's the same forum as we have a voice contest. Oh yeah, this is the same forum <laughs> where we have the voice assistant contest. You know, which is the community dot home dash assistant dot io. io. Yes. So and yes, also, the voice assistant is still going on. Yeah, that's also going on. So more, so cool announcements on that later. Uh, yes. Shall we go back into the slides? Yes, um, definitely. Because uh, look at that. Yeah, you still have two. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marcel. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you don't know, Marshall's a colleague of ours. He uh, did a big presentation. Same with Stefan and uh, uh, J Lo about matter and they hit the mark of three hours and 20 minutes around it it uh, was a nice long oh. and big informational stream so yeah, we, we had a chance to uh, pass the time but i don't think we're gonna do that yeah we like to do that but yeah like uh, stick around we're gonna talk more about the design thinking behind this so we're excited to share the rest of the the presentation with you of like how we came up with what we have right now yeah so, shall we begin? Oh, I see some yeah. comment in the. Oh. I see some comment about about the YAML. Uh, maybe I can show that too. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the share the Yeah. Let's see. What does uh, it look yeah. like? Yeah, for the YAML. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, can this zoom we in we introduce bit? like a section is just between views and uh, and cards. Is basically a, a view inside of a view, so you you cannot miss the section. But can, uh, can we zoom in a little bit, Paul? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. So basically, in the in the view, instead of cards, you have section, and inside section, you have a card. You also have the, the title of the section, and uh, yeah, section as a type, like like a, a grid section. And maybe in the future we will have uh, some other uh, type of section, uh, not a grid, but maybe a vertical section or uh, something like that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, <clears throat> nice and easy ammo. Yeah. So you don't need to deal with nested card and uh, other stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I I think like without. Thing. I think this is only for UI mode, right? Not YAML mode dashboard. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, there's no way we can save your YAML file from here. You can edit this here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, UI mode, yeah. Yeah. Ta da. Cool. Uh, do we have any other questions? We can also answer questions later at the end if you want. Um, oh, that. Oh, uh, we. I saw this issue. Like um, we, there is an issue with a layout card, custom card. So you have to update uh, to the latest uh, version of uh, this custom card, and uh, it will fix the, the issue. Yeah. Nice. Ooh, shall we? Right, so yeah. um, design behind this. So we have three things, right? Like the, the design behind this, we have the cards and section, the grid system, and the automatic arrangement. So yes, yeah, let's start. Uh, yeah, yeah, Matthias, you want to go? So as we said before, uh, we have a bunch of screenshots. So again, shout out to uh, Everything Smart Home for sharing a bunch of sc uh, screenshots and for everybody that is on our forums and Reddit and sharing some awesome stuff. Here's some examples. And as you can see on these examples, people like to group. 
So that's one of the reasons uh, we also deep dive into grouping and creating sections. So, and sections can be used in different kind of ways. That's also what we know. Some, some people like to group them by area, other people group them by purpose, for example, lights or what Paul just has demoed, uh, all shutters. Um, and normally they add a nice title on top of it. So that's one of the reasons we introduce sections. Um, and sections, uh, here's a rough mock-up that we uh, started off with, where this uh, is uh, starting from. So the benefit, benefit of this, as you, have con as you have seen in the demo, is that it reduces like, moving objects, and it makes it easier to locate the specific kind of information. So for example, that one light. So if you've got a section and the light is always at, on the top right, it always stays there in the top right. So it helps uh, finding the right information really fast. Yeah. So, and that's based on a grid. Yep. There's, uh, well, so yeah, that different. This is inspired by the, uh, what if you're a graphic designer, you probably know about it. It's the, it's the essentially the page grid. And um, it has a very long history in graphic design. It's been around since the uh, 1900s. It came out of a constructivist movement, if you know what that is. But yeah, it's like, so for books, right? You have to lay out hundreds of pages for a book. And if every page have a different like proportion, then it will look and read very strange because it doesn't look like it belonged to the same book. So the graphic designers back then came up with the grid system. And grid system is great because it's repeatable, it's practical, it's easy to like duplicate. And for infinite amount of pages, they can have the same grid and everything will be consistently like proportional. Um, so one thing we want to make sure here is that, you know, everyone, like not everyone are designers in our community. Some of us are, but uh, not a lot of users are, right? And users of the users, they also might not be designers. So we want to make sure that even if they're not designers, they can still have a pretty and nice and tidy and easily searchable dashboard. And that's why we come up with the grid because then everything will be a lot tidier and also replicable across pages. It's a lot easier to understand the relationship between each element on the page. Um, and grid system is definitely not a uh, new thing, right? You, you see it in books, and there's this hidden rhythm behind things. And actually, that's what the constructivism is about, by the way. Um, so if you look at like the iPhone apps or like my, my beloved Windows phone apps, there's always a hidden grid behind how all the elements are aligned. They are all stick to the grid, even though you cannot see it. So for example, you look at the dashboard, which is, uh, this is another draft sample here. And if you look closely, you realize that everything actually aligns to the grid. So the way the sections are designed, um, the headers, the the spacing in between, they all align to the rows and columns that we define. Uh, and all the cards uh, moving forward that we're going to design for the default is going to like align to the grid too. So we're going to make the thermostat work for that, the sensors and so on. And yeah, so there are many parts of the grid, you know, um, there's the gutters, the margins and all that. And hopefully that the, the we have like some settings on the CSS, but hopefully there might be a way to like service them for themes as well. So you can change it, hopefully. Um, but not in this version yet. Um, B, uh, so that's the grid system. So the last thing uh, was uh, drag and drop, or we officially record the rearrangement of sections and cards. <laughs> So we look at many different ways of like arranging cards uh, from the traditional, like the masonry method, uh, columns, or the Z masonry and the Z grid, which is what we end up with. And you, you, as you may see, they actually all have like advantages and disadvantages. So we look at it for 
these three criteria. Essentially, it's like if you're gonna allow people to rearrange the dashboards easily, um, and when the screen size changes, uh, can it adapt? Is the uh, when the cards are the card the location of the cards is are they memorable? Can people remember and recall whether the cards are easily? Uh, is it predictable? So when you drag the cards around, do the cards land where you where they think the card is going to land? And then lastly, it's like, is it space efficient? Like, does it like not use up too much space, right? Um, and make it all like uh, not too much blank space, but neat and tidy. So first of all, you have the, you know, what we call columns, right? Uh, the end masonry, which is essentially um, you go uh, from top to bottom. So one, two, three in the first column. So since there are 12 cards, each column is divided by four, there are three cards. So one, two, That's three, four, than five, ours, six. right? Yeah, seven, eight, nine. Right. Yeah. Some, some, like, I mean, there are dashboards that try to do that, but it doesn't mm -hmm. really work for a good amount of cards because once you resize the window from four columns to three columns, you realize that the top cards, which are usually where you think the most important information is, it gets shifted all over the place. And when it has like only two columns, it gets even worse. So this is like the option that we cannot consider. And like true masonry, which is like what you've seen before uh, in Matthias' like demo, um, it looks really neat, right? You can see that no matter in different screen sizes where there are four columns, three columns, or two columns, everything packs very well together. The problem is like like we said before, it's not predictable and it drives everybody nuts for five years. <laughs> <laughs> and the Z masonry, which is uh, what we come up with, is that you align everything in a Z shape manner. So one, two, three in the first row, four, five, six in the second row, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so on. And then after everything is uh, lined up in a grid, we collapse all the vertical space and then that's the Z masonry. Um, this is interesting. We haven't implemented this yet, but um, we'd love to get your feedback on it. It's interesting because it maximizes the use of space, but some columns end up really much taller than the others, as you can see mm -hmm. it in the two column grid. So yeah. it's kind of nice for three columns, but you know. So what we end up with by default right now for everybody, right? Like remember, Grace is about doing the default UX for everyone. Is a Z grid, uh, which is everything is in a grid, no space is compressed, uh, very predictable. Like each row is like from left to right, and then top to bottom. So the Thunderdome, <laughs> the, the death match of all these four different methods is that. The columns view, definitely not. But masonry and Z masonry are good, but they are nowhere as predictable and memorable as a Z grid. So that's why we picked that in the end, even though it's not the most space efficient compared to masonry. So, and that's the three components of the new section view. You know, the sections, the cards, the grid system, and the Z grid. And yeah, so that's the design thinking behind this. And thank you for coming to our tech talk. <laughs> tech, <laughs> not tech, no, no, that's copyright. Tech. So tech <clears throat> talk. <laughs> um, so what's next? Uh, I think somebody asked that in the comments yeah. too. I think it's important to know, right? This is uh, what about Grace chapter one? So this is it's only the only beginning number one. of the journey. Yes, yeah. number one. We don't know how many chapters are going to be. And it's not year yeah. of the dashboard because we can do more than one thing at the same time. Uh, so uh, we found but, out yeah, a lot this is stuff. something that's ongoing series. We're going to keep improving it throughout this year. Uh, one thing we definitely need to know is that this is experimental. <laughs> uh, what that means is... Uh, it's we're gonna iterate the design openly over time. Like we hear a lot of feedback, great feedback in the comments right now already. Uh, we can't hear to what you you find now. Uh, so experiment with a dashboard, but uh, this is a work in progress. So we depending on how people use it, we might actually change it completely, or we might iterate and fine tune it. Uh, definitely don't use it for your production where your family depends on it. I mean, you know, uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, so. 
but yeah, don't, we also don't have a way to migrate your dashboards over yet. If you really just want to migrate what you had, you probably have to cut, copy and paste the YAML over. But you know, that's not optimal. We're gonna figure out a way in future, but not right now. This is the first iteration. Uh, it's available right now for beta, and it's gonna be available next week in the release twenty twenty four point three. It's yeah. awesome. I've seen some questions about beta. So you can join beta, pretty easy, but to point out it's beta. So in beta is this, like the section view, but it's more than that. So it might break your system. <clears throat> Be aware, do backups, and please share yep. your logs if things break. Yeah. And if you if you join beta, join the Discord channel, the beta Discord yeah. channel, so you can report uh, easily bugs and we can uh, fix uh, yeah. them. Please don't, please don't use the one that you depend on your family depends on like your 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 garage door depends on to as your beta uh, version uh, you should run beta on a virtual machine or like a separate like raspberry pi box like just for fun or you can you can buy a home assistant green and try it just to run it too if you want <laughs> one of some of us are doing uh doing even the developer beta, like the nightly requirements. Yeah, it's just that, that, that is dedicated beta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's definitely, I, I yeah, use the nightly on my, uh, I, I use the nightly on my production uh, this week, yeah. <laughs> 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 but I don't do that uh, every month. Mm. Yeah, I use a virtual machine uh, on my Mac. I use uh, UTM, which is a great app to make virtual machines on your computer. Yeah. And yeah, so uh, it's not able to, we, you can resize card easily yet. You can only resize card by adding features. And as we said, right, only a few cards work with the grid right now, which includes the tile card, the sensor card, uh, the button card, and forgot what I else. I think, uh, yeah, that's all for now, but uh, yeah. Yep. So, yep. So yeah, this is fun. And uh, the row ahead, right? Uh, that's I think that's one of the most important part is the roadmap. So yes, we do have a roadmap and uh, we would love to share more about the roadmap soon in the future. But right now we're going to talk about the dashboards roadmap for now. Uh, the goal of the project, once again, right, is to make customization and organization dashboard easy and intuitive for everybody in the house and it's useful out of the box. So right now, the first thing we're gonna do is we wanna push it out and we want to get your feedback first and see like how that, you know, has and runs, like how, how it is to use it, like just, uh, after a few days, see how you feel about it. And then with your feedback, we're gonna keep testing and refining it. Uh, we're gonna do user tests and we're gonna ask for feedback. We might do posts on the forum. We also send out like surveys as well. We're gonna talk about that in a moment. And yeah, so we're gonna keep improving the tile card and also make sure that like all our existing card will fit to the grid. And once we're done, right, we have a good, very solid foundation for this uh, sections view. We're gonna like figure out other things like how to migrate over the sections. And later on, we're gonna start really looking into like the default dashboard, like what it really should include. So uh, if we move, if we ever move the default dashboards over to the sections field, what would it look like? You know, so a lot of great things ahead, and that's not all on the roadmap. But there are other things that I can, we cannot guarantee yet. So, but these are the things that are definitely going to happen if yes. if this sections field work out. You know, cool. And this is only dashboarding. We're doing a lot more stuff, right? <clears throat> yes. Like and the uh, voice finally. Mm -hmm. Yes, get involved. So, um, like sharing feedback. So, um, we have a, a home assistant user research group, and we already have over uh, seven hundred members already. It's 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 a great big group, and you can join too. If you want to join, you can go to the link home assistant io dash join research, and then you get a form, and you can fill out your information, and you will be a member. And what would happen is that you might get an invite to join an interview with us or uh, get a prototype to test and use a user test or other yeah. stuff. 
and we are thinking about doing a bit more like uh, also one of the questions i've seen in the chat how can we share our uh, our uh, feedback um, we're planning to do more in here with like sharing uh, uh, like in a community kind of setting because we are an open source community we should share information with each other so please help us and join the research group and then uh, yep. we'll be in contact yeah, from time to time you know there's like some designs that we're not sure about we'd love to like send out surveys like and figure out yep. what you think about it <clears throat> And it's really interesting, by the way, to meet fellow home assistant uh, users from around the globe. So the the terminology, what I call like the victim of uh, of uh, of our houses, our smart houses. <laughs> I stole that. I stole that of one of our one during an interview. User I, interviews. Yeah. We have one in the user interview. We had a chat uh, with uh, with a family member, and she told me she somewhat felt like a victim. So that's uh, that's stick with me. <laughs> yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, we we yeah, definitely need to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no more victim. Yeah. She really liked it though, but she won't. <laughs> by the way, yeah. I guess uh, say it lovingly. So, um, yeah. Uh, well, before we. Uh, finish the stream uh, also have a few uh, special things we're going to announce uh first of all i'm going to share the screen for that so first of all it's the our voice assistant contest uh, let's build and win some prizes and uh it's going to end on uh, the deadline to submit your awesome voice assistant it's going to be on March 10th, and that is, uh, I think that's a Monday or something. Um, yeah, I think so. And um, yeah, so we have some really good entries already that we would love to see what you can come up with, right? Like we have uh, not only Paul had made the, the droid from Star Wars, someone also made the Ooh. R2D2 as well, which is awesome. And <laughs> is it right here with you? <laughs> Yeah. Da -da. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Yeah. There it is. Cute. Really cool. Yeah, but it's not plugged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the cable is not uh, long enough. Yeah. So there's that. Um, secondly, oh, no, uh, if you please include it from the prices, I think so. Right. Oh yeah. What are the prices? Um, as we have like Home Assistant Green, uh, Home Assistant Sky Connect, and yeah. Also, the winners are going to come on a live stream and uh, mm -hmm. share your awesome project all together with us and see how you build it. I think, yeah, we have some really cool stuff going on, like people who did it yeah. with like uh, combined LLMs and, you know, they've actually built Jarvis now, which is awesome. <laughs> and another thing we love to talk about is jobs. Um, so we have uh we have six jobs on now uh, nabucastle.com slash jobs and uh we are looking Again, for uh all UX possible users. because of you guys because you guys yes. subscribe to number thank you for subscribing to home assistant thank you. cloud and yes we want to make sure that you are being heard and your your you know anyone who's like using home assistant in your house is also like get the we can we want to get the home approval factor right so we want to do more user research user interviews and understand what they need and what you need and what they're coming from so we are looking for our senior user experience researchers so definitely please apply if you're interested in that role we also have multiple uh developer roles at so uh from the front end developers if you're like interested yeah. in helping build more dashboards if you want to do drag right? and drop yeah you can apply Yes, <laughs> like a, a super drag and drop. Uh, definitely, uh, please apply. Uh, Python developer, Node.js developer, and also business development and account manager for our hardware as well. So definitely check it out if you're interested. Yes. Cool. Well, I guess that's all for now. Well, we are we are yeah. very on time here. Yeah. <laughs> How long do we? It's only one one hour and fifteen minutes. 
we we couldn't broke the rec we couldn't break the record yeah. of uh, Marcel and JLo on Meta no. <laughs> devices. <laughs> no matter. But that's even was probably more difficult to explain than sections, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really cool. Really I, complicated. I, it, it is. It is cool though. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I'm glad everyone learned uh, what why masonry is hard and also what masonry even is. And uh, yeah. I, I, I think uh, many people um, learned why their dashboard uh, moves when they add card and uh, why is it, it's not predictable. So. I'm glad this helped. <laughs> um, yeah, Please thank you so much. Though. During the you already did. Already. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, no, that's I one of the cool things. Yeah. yeah. I think next week for release party, we're going to try to do a speed build and see how, how fast I can fill up the dashboard with the things I need. Mm. That's cool. I think that's going to be fun. I'm also interested. Please share your stuff. Please share your screenshots yeah. on the forum and Reddit. We'll, we'll be seeing those. And also share your feedback there so what you would like or would change thank you well i guess um mm -hmm. that that's all for now and then thank you so much everybody we maybe this you. one oh sorry so thanks, again. Need to know. thanks again for trying drag and drop but as you notice masonry all messed it up right so yeah thanks zach i love uh, thomas lovin <laughs> looking forward to this <laughs> looking forward to what you're gonna hack up around uh, our sections cool yeah and you paul so paul paul is officially not very can i say it? yeah you're you're a bit sick right but this yeah, kind of cool yeah. this this stuff is so cool <laughs> Yeah, no, we almost couldn't. Here. Yeah, this is no. like so dramatic. Well to, yeah. to, today was work. I, I was not sure to to do the stream, but uh, yeah, it's okay. So I'm happy to be here. Yeah, really cool, Paul. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so us. much for making it, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. The great work. And uh, once again, Let's thanks wrap this to up, uh, I guess. thanks to uh, Grace Grace Harper. Oh, nice. And uh, the the Dutch uh, design grid, so <laughs> Mondrian. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, have a good day, afternoon, or night, everybody, or anywhere yes. in space if you're watching. Uh, thank you so much again. See thank you next you. time. Bye bye. bye. Oh.